Man, I haven't seen any haters since the Marvel reveal. Where'd they all go? Yes! Yes! Ah! How's it going, guys? Welcome back. My name is Dan, and welcome to my show yet again. I wanted to put out this video because I thought it would be a very useful way to maybe get another perspective on how we can value OMI token. There's just so many people that talk about oh, there's 300 billion tokens that will eventually enter circulating supply. There's so many tokens in general. How can OMI go to a dollar if there's so many tokens out there? And I think some of these fears can be a little bit valid, but I produced this kind of financial model to show you guys that it definitely is possible and even, I would even say feasible for OMI price to go to $1. But before I begin, like always, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and please leave me a comment down below about what you guys think is gonna happen with price. Now, the first thing I wanna tell you is that this is a financial model that I created. I am not in the business world. I'm not a professional business analyst. So take these projections with kind of a grain of salt. And I do this mostly for entertainment and also to show you guys kind of what I am thinking about. And I know Juan Carlo made a video about a financial model he created for OMI, and it got a lot of flack because people were saying, you know, where'd you get these numbers, blah, 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 all this stuff. And people even got onto me about why I thought the financial model was actually all right. But we have to look at what a financial model is. It's merely a projection of what we think future performance will look like. Imagine you have a job, you're hourly, sometimes you work 35 hours a week, sometimes maybe 45 hours a week, you get a good hourly rate. It's June 2021 and I'll ask you, what do you think you're going to make by the end of the year? I bet you a million bucks that you're gonna have a pretty good idea of what your yearly salary will be. Now, how do you know that? Well, you know what kind of work you're in, you know kind of what other people in your field make. You could even look back at your past performance, so you could say probably with a pretty high degree of certainty what you personally will make by the end of the year. And that's kind of what a financial model is. It's just taking some general information, making some educated guesses, Maybe some of those figures will be wrong and they probably will be, but I'll make the argument that you can probably guess with a decent degree of certainty of what the business will produce. And it's kind of the same way. So the first thing I would like to go over is something called the price to earnings ratio. Now, what is the price to earnings ratio? It's the ratio for valuing a company that measures its current share price relative to its per share earnings. The price to earnings ratio is also sometimes known as the price multiple or the earnings multiple. PE ratios are used by investors and analysts to determine the relative value of a company's shares in an apples to apples comparison. It can also be used to compare a company against its own historical record or compare aggregate markets against one another over time. So it's just a very easy and quick way to just look at one ratio and kind of get a good idea of what the performance of the company is. Now, obviously you wanna do more analysis than looking at just a PE ratio. You don't wanna invest just by looking at a PE ratio. You wanna dig a little deeper, but it's a good way to kind of screen things very quickly when you have a lot of companies you might be looking at. What is a typical PE ratio? Since Vivi is more of a software company, I wanted to show you some other tech companies and show you their PE ratio so you can kind of get a good idea of what a good PE ratio might be and maybe what a bad one might be. So we look at Facebook, we know that's a really large social media company. Everyone knows what Facebook is. It's trading at $340 a share today. Now, what is their PE ratio? We see their PE ratio is 29.16. And you'll see and notice that this is actually a pretty decent PE ratio for a company like this. And, and I want you to realize that Facebook is more of a mature company. 10 years ago, it, it might've been a lot smaller. Maybe you can even make the argument is more of a tech startup or something like that. So as a company matures, the PE ratio should get a little smaller and 30 is actually pretty good for a company like this. Now we're going to Alphabet, otherwise known as Google. We see that they're trading at about $2,537 per share. What is their PE ratio? Pretty similar, 32.07. So 
very similar to Facebook. It's a mature company now, you know, they used to be a lot smaller, but they've grown to an extent that they're more reliable in terms of earnings. You can predict with a higher degree of certainty. And like I said, 30 is a pretty good PE ratio for a company like this. Now I want to show you a different PE ratio, a larger PE ratio. And typically what a larger PE ratio means, it's that at that current rate of earnings, it's going to take a lot longer to actually make your investment back in terms of value. So let's look at one right now. And I think you'll know what this company is. So we got Tesla, it's $680 a share right now. Their PE ratio is 688.51, so significantly larger. And actually, months ago, it was even larger than this. It was 900, showing us that at this earning rate, it's a very overvalued company. You might have heard that on the news, oh, Tesla's overvalued, but why is it overvalued? Why do people buy something that's gonna take, you know, a long time to make your money back? Well, people realize that Tesla is growing. There's a lot of potential in Tesla. Tesla could be the biggest company like Amazon. So people are okay with buying Tesla at these prices because they realize five, 10 years down the road, it's gonna be a lot bigger of a company. And once Tesla gets more established, you'll see their PE ratio going down to somewhere a little bit more reasonable. But I wanted to show you an example of why someone would still put money into a company with a large PE ratio. So take that into consideration. So this is kind of my financial model. I wanted to go over it with you right now. So the year is 2021, and I estimate that the gross revenue for this company, for Vivi, is gonna be about $50 million. And how I took that is I basically took the revenue from uh, January 2021 to uh, June 2021, doubled it and, and added a little bit more because I think we're gonna see higher revenue going into this year. Um, it might even be higher than this and that would be great. That would definitely support my argument here, okay? So when we look at our revenue numbers here, we have the 50 million that I project for this year. We triple it twice, right? T2, D3, so 150 million, 450 million. Now we double it, 900 million, 1.8 billion, 3.6 billion. That's kind of uh, how I am projecting out the revenue. Like I said, it might be a lot higher, you know, especially with this Marvel news, it might be a lot higher. It could also be a lot lower, so take that into consideration. Now, I estimated their profit margin here, their net profit margin at 30%. And actually, for a lot of software companies, the average net profit is about 20%. So that means sometimes it could be a lot higher than the average, sometimes a little bit lower. And 30% might be a little bit too much here, but I believe these NFTs that VV sells have a high degree of profit margin. So how do we estimate our net profit? We have in the numbers here, we have 15 million, 45 million, 135 million, 270 million, 540 million, and finally close to $1 billion. We know that there's 750 billion tokens total, but only 300 billion will actually enter circulating supply that you and I can purchase on the market. So the other 450 billion are just locked away in the reserve wallet. They're used for the operations for VV. You know, they won't ever enter circulating supply. So I don't take that into consideration because it's basically for internal use, right? So circulating supply is basically the best representation of how to value VV in terms of tokens because those are what you can eventually buy on the open market. So. I have the estimated earnings per token and basically all I did was I divided the net profit by how many tokens there will be. And I know it's a little bit off for 2021 because right now there's only like 194 billion in circulating supply. But just to understand it a little bit more easily, I just did this because eventually there's gonna be approximately 300 billion tokens in circulating supply. So we have these really low numbers here, but all it really is is just estimating what the earnings will be per token, so per 300 billion tokens. So we see that it goes pretty, pretty low. You know, um, it's even hard to see here. and goes in 2026 to about 0.0036. Now you might look at these estimated earnings per token and be like, man, these numbers are really, really low. I mean, is this accurate? Well, like I said, it's a kind of a financial model and kind of stay with me a little bit longer here. So like I talked about, I talked about the PE ratio. 
So this is my little ratio I just created just for fun, but it's very similar. It's the same math, but it's the price per token earnings ratio. So this is a good way to evaluate. So remember how I talked about how a good PE ratio for an established company is about 30. And for something that's growing with a high degree of potential like Tesla, it's 600. Let's look at the PE ratios based off some estimated prices here. So we look at some of these prices. We're trading at about um, somewhere around the ballpark of 0.002. So we know that the PE ratio now is, you know, it's about 40. So kind of close to how we would value something like Facebook. And it definitely goes lower as the revenue goes higher. So could we get to a dollar? If Omi was valued at $1, this would be the PE ratio. Now 20,000 is definitely ridiculous. So 20,000 PE ratio. I don't think I've ever seen a company with a PE ratio of, of 20,000. So that would be interesting. If you do though, let me know down below. I'd be curious to know about that. So what this means is that can we hit a dollar? Now bearing some sort of miracle? Probably not because that PE ratio is ridiculous. But as the years go by, it becomes less and less ridiculous. 6,666, still ridiculous. 2,222, still a little bit ridiculous. 1,111, still kind of ridiculous, but I will make the argument that Amazon back in the day had a PE ratio of close to over 1,000 at one point, and look at them now. It's a huge, massive conglomerate and still has room to grow. So don't just discredit this because it's so high. 555, right? 555 in 2025. I mean, that's a PE ratio that's very close to Tesla here. It's actually better than Tesla. So it's looking like in the realm of possibility. Finally, 277. So what this should tell you, I would hope, is that we can definitely get to, the, to a dollar. There's so much good news coming out right now, especially with Marvel. I mean, this is definitely possible. Depending on what they do in the next couple years, we someday could hit one dollar okay it's definitely possible and let's look at some other numbers just to compare 75 cents you know eventually getting to a PE ratio of 208 now that's very doable now 25 cents 70 about 70 five cents in about 13.8 so you know five cents definitely is very realistic with this projection and by 2026 so if you look at my model here, I just focus on revenue. There's so many things I didn't take into consideration that can have an effect on price in a positive way. I didn't take into consideration even buybacks. Remember uh, Juan Carlo talked about how buybacks won't matter. I didn't take that into consideration. However, it will have more of an impact on price, right? Although I didn't take into consideration awesome things like the VVverse, I did kind of price that in my model with the huge kind of projections that we're seeing, you know, the tripling of the revenue. So that's kind of essentially considered in my model. But another thing I didn't consider is things like Bitcoin. You know, Bitcoin has the biggest factor on OMI price right now. When Bitcoin is down, OMI is down. Now, why is that? Take into consideration how people buy OMI. Do they buy OMI with cash directly? No. Not at all. You have to take your cryptocurrency and actually use that to buy OMI, right? You have to do these trading pairs from, from Ethereum to OMI or USDT to OMI. There's these trading pairs. So because you can't directly buy OMI with fiat right now because of our lack of uh, legitimate exchanges, Bitcoin will have a huge effect on, on, on price still. Now, when we get these major exchange listings, where you could theoretically buy OMI with fiat, i.e. Coinbase, then this will eventually be less of an issue. So anyways, I hope you guys liked the video. All I'm trying to show you guys is it's not impossible to get to $1. $1 can happen by 2026 according to this model. I still stick to my prediction that within five years we will see Omi hit close to a dollar. Hopefully you'll stay there, but you know, I'm also predicting it could be a range between 25 to 75 cents. So I hope you guys got some insight of how I think about the token and why I have come to these predictions that I've come to. So anyways, I hope you guys liked the video. Do you guys have any thoughts about my model? Leave them down below. 
Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you want to hear more. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you in the next one.